Hey there, everyone. This is Chris McDonald, and I've got James Harris and Matt Avery on the back end um, helping out as well. So today's Timer Tip Tuesday is going to be back to our normal 20-minute uh, time frame, hopefully, um, so that we're not keeping you all day. And uh, today is race day scoring tips and tricks. Um, it's not top to bottom how to use race day scoring. The idea here is you're using race day scoring. Um, you've got a pretty good understanding of what's going on, but um, maybe you're hitting some hurdles here and there or just some things that help speed up your race day experience. So um, obviously this is our intro and um, we're going to go into the tips and tricks one by one. And then we have quite a bit of upcoming training. Um, so hopefully um, you guys can attend that. And um, and then we can um, do a Q&A as needed. So um, what I'm going to be doing, which is a little bit different, is I'm going to be uh, I'm going to start on the slide, go over what we're talking about, and then we'll jump into um, we'll we'll jump into the actual slide itself, or, or sorry, into race day scoring itself, and, and go through what we're talking about. So the uh, without further ado, and if you have something that you've been um, hitting as a hurdle, uh, go ahead and pop it in there and we'll see if we have time to cover it. So uh, we're going to kind of work our way down race day scoring um, from the dashboard and then on the race um, on the left hand side column. So the first thing is um, importing a race. A number of people have never imported a race. Um, so you can do so by hitting manage races and choose a race file from, uh, to import from a file. So um, all you have to do is if you're in a specific event and you want to export it, you would export it here and you can export the setup only or the entire event. And what that does is it gives you um, a zip file. So the benefit here is a quick way to get all your streams onto a new computer is you can create a fake event, assign all the streams to a timing location, um, and any assigned uh, streams will transfer over in that export. Now, I wouldn't suggest scoring with that event because it's going to be a mess. Um, I can give you an example of what I'm talking about here. Um, so if I go into manage races, fairly certain that in this event, um, I set up, if I go into my streams, you can see a whole bunch of decoders that are being used. Well, I didn't put out that much um, timing equipment. That would be either an enormous event or I would be insane. Um, so what really happened is I have all of these um, normal split points, but then I have test. And underneath test, you can see all of my decoders listed. Now, if you don't have the streams assigned and they're just streams, so if I if I export this, the assigned streams the ones up here will export out. The unassigned streams will not. So that's just something to consider. Um, that this is for maybe your initial setup. If you buy a new computer, it's a it's a quick and easy trick to get um, all your streams over to your new computer. So tip and trick number two: um, chip assignments. If you manually assign one chip you need to manually assign all. So what that means is if we go into another event, let's go into maybe a, um, a 5K event um, where the bib equals the chip. So in this event, bib number 5890 actually had on chip 5890. So when we go into our participants and we go into our chip auto assignment, we don't have anything in here. We don't have a cross reference file in here. Now, um, if we go into a triathlon where we used um, ankle chips and we did have to create a file, if I go into chip auto assignment, scroll down, you can see bib and the chip, right? So, what we're saying here is if you assign one, so if I go in, and if I assign, let's see if I have them in this specific. Yeah, so no one has one. So let me find a person. So 347. So if I go back in and set up 
Bib 347 has, I'm, and I'm going to mess this person up. I don't really care. This is a test event. Um, oh, give me one sec. Let's add a single chip assignment. So bib number 347 is chip 2001. And we'll add that. So we have that down there now. 347 is 2001. So more than likely, what's going to happen is it's going, it, it now it might not do it right now, but it will foul up all the other people because what's going to happen is it's going to be looking for um, all of those people's times. So now I recalculated and I don't have any data for the other people. Previously, I had all those people finished. And so that's what, what happened is it wants everyone now because I have one person, because I have one auto assign, it wants all people auto assigned. So just keep that in mind. If for some reason you're going in and you've got one tag that is not uh, like bib number 347 is chip 2001, but but bibs one through 346 are one to one, meaning bib one has chip one. You need to go in and you need to update a spreadsheet um, with the, that data on there. And so the second thing here is make sure you select the correct spreadsheet header settings. And what that means is the spreadsheet header settings are if you don't have a header record. So if you go into your chip file and the top line does not say bib and chip, then you need to select this. If you have the selected and your first line um, is, is um, or, or if you don't have this selected and you don't have a header, it's going to assume that first line, so bib one is chip A, B, C, D, one, two, three. It's not going to import that because it's going to think that it's the, it's going to think that that's the header. So please make sure that your spreadsheet settings are um, what you're actually using. Hey, so moving on. Before we move on from there, yep. um, I don't know if you've used this before, but we did recently add a way in the chip assignments, uh, the chip auto assignments, to use a one-to-one -one chip assignment. Uh, so you click add one-to-one uh, -one chip assignments. What this does is it says, okay, I've let's say I had one person who wore the wrong chip, and I want to quickly apply one-to-one -one assignments for everybody else. This is really useful. So what this will do is if you say from bib to one whatever, yeah, it'll automatically put in one-to-one -one assignments for all of those people. Yeah, good point. And it will skip over any that it runs into. So let's see. All right, on to the next. And this is bib assignments for teams. Now, a number of you might not do um, teams or relays or things like that. For those of you that do, especially triathlons is a great example. Um, most people doing triathlons are, they might be dynamically assigning bibs, but for group team bibs, they um, normally you're pre-assigning those um, at the run sign up level. And so um, if for some reason you go in and you see, and, and I'm gonna be going into an example that, um, that does have them pulled through, but if you go into your participants and teams for this triathlon and you don't see any bib numbers in there, um, one really quick thing, and, and you do see them at the run signup level um, and you see them in the check-in app for your group team bib number, um, all you need to do is go back into your participant sync and make sure that you hit save sync settings again. Um, and that will resync the, that data and um, it should pull that that information down for your teams. All right, on to streams. Now, um, I'm gonna go ahead and say this really quickly. We're not gonna go into stream setup issues um, or getting that data flow into race day scoring only because we have um, separate talks that we've done about setting up streams um, for each one of the hardware use cases. If for some reason you have been having those issues, 
um, please reach out and we can try to pinpoint what's going on um, in your process and, and hopefully smooth that out for you. But um, for the streams, a suggestion would be to create both a TCP IP and a file stream in advance of your race. And so what that means is if you have um, if you have an event, let's see, if we have an event and we go in and I don't know what streams this, oh, let me find an event that, sorry, I jumped into one that we didn't have. All right, so we've got direct streams for all of these. So ideally what we would do is we would also have file streams down here that are unused as well um, for each one of these decoders. So the purpose behind that is um, if you have any firmware updates, a lot of times people will quick, very, very quickly through those firmware updates and the firewall settings. Um, in most scenarios, you're wanting to make sure that your firewall settings are set to both pub to allow through at, on both public and private networks. Um, and, and it's really determined as to how you have your um, your Wi-Fi or your um, your LAN connections set up. Um, but in my experience with most timers, you're wanting to make sure both public and private um, firewall settings are, are open for these connections. Um, and if you forget to turn on your private, um, it can stop your TCP IP connection um, it, through race day scoring. And, and that goes with any software um, or really any scoring platform. This is not um, specific to race day scoring. Um, so, however, you can still download a file out of your middleware onto your computer. And so by having that ability to quickly switch over from a TCP IP direct connect to a file, um, it, it just allows you not to, in the stress of the moment or in the heat of the moment, um, have to go through and, oh gosh, okay, so we've got, we've got this. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna copy it, I'm gonna add a stream. You know, and, and so now I'm having to do this all while the the person sitting sitting over top of me um, and sorry, I should have typed file. Um, and, and asking, well, well, when are we gonna when can we when can we get results? When can we do this? When can we do that? So um so anyways, th this would be what you would end up doing for, uh, and then hitting save. So I've already got that saved. I'm not gonna save this one. All right, so just make sure it's a good practice to have TCP IP and file streams set up and kind of saved on all of your devices. Timing locations. So number one, if you create timing locations, ensure that you update your start finish location and scored events as needed. So what this means is, we go into timing locations and we create an additional, um, maybe we have a 5K start and a 10 mile start. Um, we just need to make sure that when we go into our scored events that we have the right start location selected. The reason being is because this is what our overall time is gonna be calculated off of. And we know that because when we go into segments, we select an event, this is what, that it's grayed out, it's locked from the data that's in the scored events. So definitely make sure you update those um, in your scored events if you add um, additional timing locations that need to be used as your start and or finish. Also, ensure your total number of occurrences is the max that you'll see during a race at that location. So. Let's go back in and I'm gonna to go to, I keep jumping into new races because we have a lot of different instances here. So um, if we go into our timing locations, we have a start finish. Um, and I think this event has a 5K and a 10K. And the 5K goes out and comes back and finishes. The 10K runs a loop through the finish line and comes back again. So the total number of occurrences, the maximum of occurrences we're gonna see is three. 
um, and disregard the times. This was a, like I said, a test event. So as people go out, they run the loop and they come back for the 5K, they're done. So there's only two occurrences for the 5K. However, the 10K starts, goes around, comes through and finishes on the second time around. So it's a total of three occurrences. So, and we'll get, we'll go ahead and hop forward to one of our other tips. And that is um, make sure you update, if it is a looped course, that you update your segments as needed. This is the only time where you must go into your segments. So for the 5K, the first read and the second read are all you need to know. And that's exactly as it should be. For the 10K though, you need to update this to the third read. So we did a, uh, a training on this a while back, but just wanna remind you that if you have a looped course that goes through the start finish line, you need to make sure you update on the segments the endpoint occurrence to use for the total event. This, is a, this next one's a little bit confusing to people, um, but it, it is a really good point. And that is if you're timing by gap factor, so if you have like an open start finish line, but the start line is way over um, over on this side and the finish line is way over there, um, but you want a time by gap factor, you still need to treat the start finish like a shared location. Um, it's the only way that you can get those gap factor settings. So again, even if we had, even if this example um, where we have, you know, a start line that's 100 meters away, we still would set a common start finish. And that's because if you're not taking start finish times, if we're taking finish and or split times, but we don't have a split location, it's not gonna give you these gap factors to time off of from start to finish. So again, just keep that in mind um, that if you're going to be timing off the gap factors, you have to treat the start and finish um, as a common start finish, even if they're physically separate. Scored events. So we've already talked about the ensure timing locations are correct for your scored events. I'll go into that one more time just to make sure. So again, we're gonna go into our scored events. We make sure that our, our start finishes are correct. Um, and then for corrals, we would, or sorry, not corrals, for segments, we would go in and make sure that the, um, the occurrence is correct. Also, scored events, setting team relay scoring. Um, so here's where you would go in and say, for this event, do we have team scoring? We do not. So if I click on team scoring, I have none. Um, you can have relay or aggregate. If you're doing a triathlon, uh, it would be relay. Um, if you're doing like uh, aggregate team scoring would be maybe a, a corporate run where everybody's combined in together, but running separately. Um, those are aggregate teams. So if I go into back into a, say a triathlon and I go into my scored events, my individual event, does it have team scoring, scoring set up? It does not. If I go into my relay event and go into team scoring, I've got relay and team members have common bib number because everyone on the team is running with Bib number whatever, 303. And we can see that when we go into participants and teams, and that bib number is right here. So all of these people are running with a team bib number. And that being said, um, team bib number is treated the exact same way as a regular bib number when you import your chip code. So when you import your, um, your bib chip file, that's going to be assigned in the same way. You don't need to do anything special for, um, for your relays, even though you're using a team bib. No questions so far. Maybe it's because I'm blazing through some of these. Um, let's see. Scored events, and now we're on to segments. We've already talked about this, but I'll go through it one more time. So on our segments, I'm gonna go back into our test race. So we go through onto segments and we double check that the endpoint occurrence is correct for a looped course. 
So this is just an out and back. This is not a loop for the 5K. However, for the 10K, it is looped. And so we have to update this. This was originally at two. So we need to update it at three. Now, you can forget to update this if I set this to two. And I have the first 5K is one to occurrence two. The second 5K is occurrence two to occurrence three. It's gonna give me an error. Please correct all errors before resubmitting. And it's gonna say segment first 5K, cumulative distance is unequal. Why? Because there is an occurrence three down here. And my max is two right now. So if I change this to three, hit save, it'll save. Hopefully that makes sense. Age groups um, and classifications. So let's jump in to a, let's go to a triathlon because that's usually a good example of this. So if we go into age groups and classifications, um, we're not gonna go through single insert and range, range inserts, those, uh, them, those make sense. But for individual in the Olympic, if we go to top finishers, you see we have an overall division, which is fairly normal overall, uh, starting at zero age from three to three. Um, and I have no filters here. But for Clydesdale, I wanna have Clydesdales in here. So I set Clydesdale with a starting age of zero. And all I do is, and I know I don't have more than 30 Clydesdales. I put my gender by male only, because I do not have females in this. I don't want them in their age groups. So this is gonna remove them from their age groups. I set it at 30, I could have set it at 300, it does not matter. So then I said, the field, please select your division because I had a custom question at the run signup level of what is your division? Um, and it defaults to age group, but they could choose Clydesdale, Athena and Novice as well. So I said, please select your division is equal to Clydesdale. Now, if I had Masters Clydesdale, and regular Clydesdale, I could have also added a filter that age is less than 40. And this would do regular Clydesdales. And then the next one, I can make a master's Clydesdale division that your division equals Clydesdale, age is greater than or equal to 40. Same goes and save it. Same goes for Athena. So what about novice? Well, novice, we make sure that I show them separate. They're not combined. They're not male or female only. And their division is novice. Hope that makes sense to everyone. And you could use that for military, anything that you're using a custom question. So that's a really easy way to get um, categorical, uh, category uh, fields um, in your age group reports. All right, a couple more. Um, we've ticked over our 20 minute mark, so maybe we'll be done in the next five minutes. Um, going into our reports, we have uh, don't update an auto saving report. Uh, create a new one and either turn it off or delete the incorrect one. So what we mean here is, let's say that my, um, let's find uh, another example, we'll go to the MyLapse one. Um, and so let's say that this 5K overall report is publishing. So what I might do is I might duplicate this and save it as results or something like that. You can't can't save it as the exact same thing. And you change whatever filters or whatever you need to do or add or edit columns as needed. Um, and then you save the report. So now I have the 5K overall results. I don't have any auto save settings um, set yet. And so then I would just go in and delete this one. And then you could um, you would be deleting your um, results and divisions at the run signup level. So this is again, this is maybe say uh, you wanted to show people that hadn't started yet as did not start or did not finish at the run signup level. Um, while you're live streaming, you could be doing this. Um, but if you go in and and I just go in and edit and I start, start making changes to this, 
like I want to show non-finishers and hit save, it will save, but it could corrupt your results as they're going up to run signup because you're doing it midstream um, during results push. So it's a very good idea to um, create a new upload and then um, you know basically start fresh with with that new upload. And then also um, a really neat feature that I, I didn't realize, but a number of people don't know about. Okay, well, we wanna do our age group report. Let's go into um, our reports for this triathlon. So we wanna do our age group report. So we've got our top three males, top three finish or females, we've got our Clydesdales, we've got our novices, well, so now I don't want five people in this report. You know, I don't want to print out that much information. So I can go in and edit this report and filter the number of people to show to three. Now this is an age group report. This is not a live stream ring report. So I can, can update this as needed. So I don't wanna see non-starters. I don't wanna see non-finishers. So I can save this and go back into the sprint report. And so it's going to give me my top three male, female overall, still going to give me my Clydesdales and Athenas and novices fully because I put those at 30 in the overall categories. But when I go down here now, I will have no age groups over three. Now, why would I not want to set, um, why would I not want to set those um, overall categories back in here? Why would I not want to set Clydesdale to just three since I'm only giving three awards? Well, the, the Clydesdale um, is then going to filter back into the people that don't win awards are going to filter back into their age groups um, with the way I have it presently set up. So just keep that in mind. That's why I set the Clydesdale to a max um, of this, this many. So what you could do um, if you wanted to is you could set that to three. Um, remove them from their age group winners. And then um, you could set all of the other age groups um, to to only pull people that had selected age groups, but those would be overall categories as well. And it's just gonna be a, a lot harder to, to deal with. The way this is presently set up is a really, really quick and easy way to set up age groups with overall categories. So no questions so far, which is awesome. Um, so really quickly, I know we talked about it last week. Um, so far, that, that's the tips and tricks uh, for today. We will do more of these. Um, we do have a race day scoring certification um, next Tuesday, so a week from today, um, from 8.30 until noon. And, um, and so e even if you're already certified, but you wanna go back through it, you're more than welcome to join. Um, also the race joy certification, if you're not currently a race joy certified, um, same day, Tuesday from one until 5 p.m. So for those of you that wanna do everything, it will be a little bit of a long day, um, but uh, I think you'll get a lot out of it if you're not presently certified. Um, and then Wednesday and Thursday are our symposium. Um, it is virtual this year, we just didn't wanna chance it. Um, and so it, it is one more, uh, one more symposium of virtual. We do intend to uh, host our winter symposium in person down in Florida. Um, so there is a timer track um, for the symposium. It's mainly on Thursday. Um, so if you're not presently signed up for the symposium, please do, it's free. Um, everything's recorded and um, you get all a uh, link to all those recordings at the end of, um, at the, end of the symposium. Um, also, uh, there is a Summer of Joy 5K. It's a demo on the 22nd. Um, and that is uh, a virtual 5K. The, the purpose of this, sure, if you really wanna run a virtual 5K, great. Um, it's not so much so that you can go run a 5K, it's so that you can experience race joy if you haven't already. It's a great tool as a timer to have in your arsenal. Um, it, it can help um, if you're bidding um, on an event, it's a tool in your pocket that you could throw in to help you win um, business or if it's an event that you already have and you wanna upsell it 
that you can upsell it to, to generate additional revenue. So understanding how to use it um, is very important because it is self-used uh, or self-supported. So once you get everything set up, it is the, the expectation is that you will be supporting this um, on your end. And then um, finally, uh, the Tuesday following is, and um, I'm not sure if that the 23rd is correct. I think it would be the 27th. So I apologize um, for the date, but Tuesday uh, after the symposium is um, a race day scoring and RFID um, integration. So if any of you are RFID timers, um, we will have a special guest in uh, helping walk you through how to set up your streams um, and set up your timing locations, both in uh, RFID and in race day scoring. That being said, that is uh, the end of our Timer Tip Tuesday. Are there any questions today? Told you I wanted to keep it short. We've been doing hour long ones. I know that can be uh, a lot in the middle of the day, so getting a little bit shorter. Well, I don't see any questions coming in. So um, if you do have any questions later, feel free to shoot me an email, crisp at run sign up. And I'd be more than happy to, uh, to set up a training session with you. Um, if you want to learn more again about specifically uh, race day scoring or race joy, um, next Tuesday is your day. Um, and then there's going to be a lot of good content um, at, the, uh, at the symposium. So um, yeah. Look forward to seeing you guys next week and uh, hope you have a great weekend of races. Take care.